Bosch pulled in behind the grouping of official vehicles, the forensics van and the coroner's wagon, as well as several marked and unmarked police cars. There was an outer perimeter of yellow police tape surrounding the crime scene, and inside this boundary was a silver Porsche Carrera with its hood open. It had been sectioned off by more yellow tape, and this told Bosch that it was most likely the victim's car. Bosch parked and got out. A patrol officer assigned to the outer perimeter took down his name and badge number, 2997, and allowed him under the yellow tape. He approached the crime scene. Two banks of portable lights had been erected on either side of the body, which was in the center of a clearing that looked down upon the city. As Bosch approached, he saw forensics techs and coroner's people working on and around the body. A tech with a video camera was documenting the scene as well. Detective? Bosch turned and put the beam of his light into the face of a patrolman. It was the officer who had taken his name and badge number at the perimeter. He lowered the light. What is it? There's an FBI agent here. She's asking permission to enter the crime scene. Where is she? The officer led the way back to the yellow tape. As Bosch got close, he saw a woman standing next to the open door of a car. She was alone and she wasn't smiling. Bosch felt the thud of uneasy recognition hit his chest. Hello, Harry, she said when she saw him. Hello, Rachel, he said. He led her to the clearing where the victim was cast in the sterilizing fluorescent light from the mobile units. The dead man was lying on the orange dirt about five feet from the drop-off at the edge of the overlook. Beyond the body and over the edge, the moonlight reflected off the reservoir below. Past the dam, the city spread out in a blanket of a million lights. The cool evening air made the lights shimmer like floating dreams. Evening, Harry, said Joe Felton, the medical examiner. So, Doc, you want to tell us what we've got here? Bosch stooped down on the other side of the body to get a better look. We've got a man who was brought here or came here for whatever reason and was made to get down on his knees. Felton pointed to the victim's pants. There were smudges of orange dirt on both knees. Then somebody shot him twice in the back of the head and he went down face first. And there is one other thing you should note, Felton said, drawing attention back to the body. Bosch stooped down again. Felton reached across the body to point at the hand on Bosch's side. We have one of these on each hand. He was pointing to a red plastic ring on the middle finger. Bosch looked at it and then checked the other hand. There was a matching red ring. On the inside of each hand, the ring had a white facing that looked like some sort of tape. What are they? Bosch asked. I don't know yet, Felton said. But I think I do, Walling said. Bosch looked up at her. He nodded. Of course she knew. They're called TLD rings, Walling said. Stands for Thermal Luminescent Dosimetry. It's an early warning device. It's a ring that reads radiation exposure. The news brought an eerie silence to the gathering until Walling continued. And I'll give you a tip she said. When they are turned inward like that, with the TLD screen on the inside of the hand, that usually means the wearer directly handles radioactive materials. Bosch, Brenner, Romo, and the rest of the lab team all stepped out of the elevator in the medical clinic's basement. Romo's boss was on his way in, but Brenner was not waiting. Romo used a key card to gain entrance to the oncology lab. The lab was deserted. Brenner found an inventory sheet and a lab log on an entrance desk and started reading. Bosch noticed a small video monitor on the desk that showed a camera view of a safe. He was here, Brenner said. When, Bosch asked. Seven o'clock, according to this. 
The leader and his chosen second snapped on their face guards and used the key card and combination to open the safe room door. Miller carried the radiation monitor and they entered the safe room, pulling the door closed behind them. Less than a minute after going into the safe room, the two men in hazmat suits stepped out. Brenner stood up. The men unsnapped their face guards and Ryan looked at Brenner. He shook his head. The safe's empty, he said. Brenner pulled his phone from his pocket, but before he could punch in a number, Ryan stepped forward, holding out a piece of paper torn from a spiral notebook. This was all that was left, he said. Bosch looked over Brenner's shoulder at the note. It was scribbled in ink and difficult to decipher. Brenner read it out loud. I am being watched. If I don't do this, they'll kill my wife. 32 sources cesium. God forgive me, no choice. They almost had their pick of the place. Bosch went to a booth in a corner that would allow them a clear view of the front door. The waitress came over quickly. She was an old battle axe with her steel gray hair in a tight bun. Working graveyard at Denny's in Hollywood had leached the life out of her eyes. As soon as the waitress left them alone, Bosch answered Ferris's questions. We're being cut out, he said. That's what's going on here. Are you sure? How do you know? Because they've already scooped up our victim's wife and partner, and I can guarantee you that they are not going to let us talk to them. Harry, did they say that? Did they tell you that we couldn't talk to them? There's a lot at stake here, and I think you're being a little paranoid. You're jumping to... Am I? Well, wait and see, partner. Watch and learn. He was halfway through his eggs when he saw four men in dark suits walk in with unmistakable federal purpose in their strides. Wordlessly, they split into twos and started walking through the restaurant. There were less than a dozen diners in the place, most of them strippers and their boyfriend pimps heading home from four o'clock clubs, Hollywood night crawlers, fueling the engine before putting it to sleep. Bosch calmly continued to eat and watched the men in suits stop at each table, show credentials, and ask for IDs. Ferras was too busy splashing hot sauce on his eggs to notice what was happening. Bosch got his attention and nodded toward the agents. 